Cannibalism. In an era dominated by globalization and technological advancements, it's easy to believe such practices are relics of a barbaric past. Yet, in secluded corners of our world, tribes exist who have practiced cannibalism within living memory. These are complex societies with rich histories and motivations far more nuanced than sensationalized narratives. This essay delves into the world of cannibalistic tribes, focusing on their cultural beliefs and the challenges they face in an interconnected world. Papua New Guinea, the second largest island nation globally, is a land of unparalleled biodiversity and cultural diversity. This island nation is home to over 800 distinct indigenous groups, each with its own language, customs, and beliefs. For millennia, these tribes lived in relative isolation, developing unique ways of life in harmony with their environment and spiritual beliefs. Tales of headhunters, cannibals, and strange rituals emerged from the depths of the jungle, captivating imaginations. Among the many tribes, a few stand out for their historical association with cannibalism. The Korowai, the Four, and the Asmat are just a few examples of groups whose practices have captivated anthropologists and adventurers alike. Deep within the dense, verdant rainforests of southeastern Papua New Guinea, live the Korowai people, a tribe of hunter-gatherers renowned for their unique treetop dwellings, which are perched high above the forest floor. They have a historical association with cannibalism, a practice that has intrigued and mystified outsiders for generations. Their homes, some reaching heights of over 100 feet, are architectural marvels, constructed entirely from natural materials found in the rainforest showcasing their ingenuity and deep connection to their environment. Life for the Korowai revolves around the rainforest which is both their home and their lifeline. They are skilled hunters using bows and arrows to bring down wild pigs and other game, demonstrating their deep understanding of the forest's ecosystem. The rainforest provides for their every need, from food and shelter to tools and materials for daily living. It also offers medicine and spiritual guidance with the Korowai relying on traditional knowledge passed down through generations. The Korowai believe in a world inhabited by spirits both benevolent and malevolent which influence their daily lives and rituals. It is within this spiritual framework that their practice of endocannibalism comes into play, a ritual that is deeply rooted in their belief system. They believe that consuming the remains of their loved ones allowed them to absorb their strength and wisdom, ensuring that the deceased's spirit lived on within the community. This practice, though controversial, is a testament to their profound respect for their ancestors and the interconnectedness of their community. The act of cannibalism, often perceived as the epitome of savagery, takes on a different meaning within the cultural context of societies like the Korowai. For them, it was a deeply ritualized practice imbued with spiritual significance and governed by strict social protocols. Endocannibalism was believed to be essential for guiding the spirits of the deceased into the afterlife. The brain, considered the seat of the soul, was removed and consumed by close relatives. This act was seen as a final act of love and respect a way to keep the spirit of the deceased alive within the community. Different groups had varying reasons and rituals associated with cannibalism. Understanding the cultural context is key to comprehending these practices. Endocannibalism versus exocannibalism, disturbing yet important differences. The term cannibalism often evokes a singular horrifying image, but the reality is far more nuanced. Endocannibalism involves the consumption of individuals within one's own group, often family members. This practice is often rooted in spiritual beliefs and rituals surrounding death and the afterlife. Exocannibalism refers to the consumption of individuals outside one's own group, often enemies or rivals. This form is often associated with intertribal warfare, dominance, and revenge. The motivations behind exocannibalism are varied and complex. Understanding these distinctions is crucial for moving beyond sensationalized narratives and appreciating the complex interplay of culture, belief, and survival. The Four People in Karoo, a tragic tale of disease that shook an entire community. The Four People, an isolated tribe in the highlands of Papua New Guinea, offer a tragic example of the unintended consequences of cannibalism, a practice deeply rooted in their cultural traditions. Their story is linked to Kuru, a rare and fatal prion disease that ravaged their population for decades, causing untold suffering and loss. 
Kuru is a devastating neurological disorder that causes severe neurological damage, leading to tremors, loss of coordination, dementia, and ultimately, death. The symptoms are both heartbreaking and terrifying. The cause of this epidemic remained a mystery for years, baffling scientists and medical professionals alike. Researchers eventually discovered a link between Kuru and the foray's unique mortuary ritual of endocannibalism, where they consumed the flesh of deceased relatives as a sign of respect and mourning. The prion responsible for Kuru is highly resistant to conventional methods of decontamination, and once ingested, it could lie dormant for years before triggering neurological damage, making it a silent and deadly threat. The discovery of Kuru and its link to cannibalism highlighted the potential health risks associated with consuming human tissue, shedding light on the dangers of certain cultural practices and the importance of understanding disease transmission. Modern Encounters and the Decline of Cannibalism The 20th century marked a turning point for many isolated tribes in Papua New Guinea. The arrival of missionaries, anthropologists, and government officials brought about unprecedented contact with the outside world. Missionaries condemned cannibalism as a barbaric and sinful practice, promoting Western values and beliefs. Anthropologists documented these unique cultures, bringing greater awareness to the practice. Government influence also contributed to the decline of cannibalism. By the late 20th century the practice had largely been abandoned. The challenge for these communities became navigating the complexities of modernity while preserving their cultural heritage. The Impact of Outsiders, a Double-Edged Sword The arrival of outsiders in the remote regions of Papua New Guinea brought about a complex wave of changes. Missionaries played a crucial role in improving literacy rates and providing access to basic health care. However, their efforts often led to a sense of cultural shame and erosion of indigenous knowledge. Anthropologists sometimes inadvertently contributed to the exploitation of these tribes. Government intervention often resulted in conflicts over land rights, resource management, and cultural autonomy. The influx of tourists brought about economic opportunities, but also exacerbated the commodification of indigenous culture. The challenge for these communities lies in finding a balance between preserving their cultural identity and adapting to the realities of a globalized world. Ethical Considerations Understanding versus Judging When confronting the reality of cannibalism, it's easy to fall into the trap of judgment. Cultural relativism, the idea that a culture's beliefs and practices should be understood within its own context, is paramount. Historical context is equally important. The tribes that practiced cannibalism often did so in environments with limited resources. Ethnocentrism, the belief in the inherent superiority of one's own culture, poses a significant barrier to understanding. The goal should be to approach these practices with sensitivity, empathy, and a genuine desire to understand. This nuanced approach allows for a more meaningful engagement with the complexities of the human experience. The Future of Cannibalistic Tribes – A World on the Brink As globalization continues, the future of isolated tribes with a history of cannibalism hangs in the balance. The forces of modernization present both opportunities and challenges for these communities. Some tribes embrace modernity, while others resist, striving to preserve their traditions, the rise of ecotourism presents a double-edged sword. The challenge for these tribes lies in finding a balance between embracing modernity and safeguarding their cultural heritage. The future remains uncertain for these communities. Their stories serve as a powerful reminder of the importance of cultural diversity and the need to approach different ways of life with sensitivity and respect. Conclusion, Reflections on Humanity and Cultural Diversity the exploration of cannibalistic tribes offers profound insights into the vast spectrum of human behavior and the enduring power of culture. These tribes, often misunderstood, provide a unique window into the diverse ways humans adapt to their environments and social structures. It forces us to confront our preconceived notions of civilization, morality, and what it means to be human. By examining these tribes, we challenge our own biases and expand our understanding of human nature. Through the lens of cultural relativism, we begin to grasp the complex interplay of belief, survival, and social cohesion. This perspective allows us to appreciate the intricate balance that these communities maintain in their daily lives. It reminds us that our own cultural values and moral compasses are not universal. 
what we consider normal or ethical, may be vastly different from the practices and beliefs of others. The story of these tribes is about the resilience of culture and the challenges of navigating a rapidly changing world. Their ability to preserve their traditions amidst external pressures is a testament to their strength and adaptability. It highlights the importance of preserving cultural diversity. Each culture adds to the rich tapestry of human experience, offering unique perspectives and wisdom. As we move forward in an interconnected world, it's crucial to remember the lessons learned from these encounters. Embracing cultural diversity can lead to more harmonious and innovative societies. The future of humanity depends on our ability to approach difference with understanding and celebrate the richness of our diverse worldviews. By fostering mutual respect and learning from one another, we can build a more inclusive and compassionate world.